Today, I'm going to show you how to call your images in Lightroom. Hey guys, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace, and you can find me on flurn.com, where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. And we're making Lightroom fun in this episode. We're going to show you how to call your images. Now, what is calling? Basically, calling is the process of taking an entire photo shoot with the images and narrowing it down to just the images that you actually want to keep and maybe edit for final pics. Because we all know with digital cameras now, you can take hundreds of images during a shoot. So how do you actually get that, like all that giant block of images just down to like, oh, this is the one that I like the best. So that, that's what we're going to show you in this episode. Now we're using the actual like culling techniques that I use in my own photography. So if you guys have any other ideas or process that, that you use, please leave them in a comment right down below so we can all learn how to get better and share together. So we're actually going, this is a, a complete photo shoot that we're going to be doing and then stay tuned for after this episode, just watch till the very end, we're going to show you a quick behind the scenes of this actual photo shoot as well so you can see the lighting set up and things like that. Okay, let's go ahead and jump into Lightroom. Okay, so here we are in Lightroom. Now, these are all of the images from our photo shoot with Ian. In this case, he, this concept is he's holding a disco ball. There's really, really cool images here. So how do you go from these images? Let's just scroll through them so you can see how many photos we took you know, during this short photo shoot. That, that's a lot of different photos. So how do you go through this many photos and figure out the ones that you actually want to use and the ones you don't want to use? Well, my first suggestion actually has to do with how the pictures are rendered. So if you click on a photo, there we go, sometimes it'll take a second or two to actually render the photo out. You know, it's actually like processing the information in your computer, okay? The thing you can do to speed that up is render all of your previews out ahead of time. So to do so, go up here to library, okay? Go down to previews, and I recommend going to build one-to-one -one previews. Now, you want to select all your images and do this at the very beginning. This takes like five minutes, so you can take a little, you know, coffee break or whatever. Just go do something else and come back in five to ten minutes, and all your images will be previewed out. The reason I suggest that is now, if I want to click on an image to see if I like it, I don't have to wait for that preview to load every single time. It just makes it much, much faster. So, render out those previews ahead of time. You'll be working faster. So all of our previews are rendered out, we're ready to start culling. Now when you're culling, I highly recommend thinking about culling as a series of steps. Rather than saying, okay, in, right now I'm going to choose the best image, think about it like, I'm going to choose, uh, I like these, and then refine it down from there, and refine it down from there, and refine it down from there. So we're going to go through multiple steps. So my first step is absolute no. Get rid of your absolute no images. So let's go ahead and in there, show you how to do it. So we're ready to get rid of our absolute no images. Now, these are images like that don't come out properly exposed, or in this case, this isn't even our subject. This was uh, our camera operator. We had him in there as a test model. So those are absolute no images, right? They're, I'm not gonna wind up using those images. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hold down shift and click on all of these and hit X on my keyboard, and that's gonna set them as rejected. You see we have a black flag up there. Okay, now we'll get to this back in a second, but basically your absolute no's, the first thing I recommend doing is setting these as rejected. Now, this is a quick process here that I usually go through, and this is, again, something that like that image, for instance, that's an absolute no. I don't need that on my hard drive. I don't need that taking up space. It's obvious that some of my lights didn't fire, right? That one too, and that one too. So let's hit X on those as well. So we're going to set those as rejected, okay? And as we scroll down, this should be a, just a, a real quick process of like, yep, that's definitely, you know, my lights didn't fire, I'm underexposed, the camera's like, <laughs> you know, something was in front of the lens, the subject is, you know, not even in the picture or whatever. These are just like, let's get, go ahead and get rid of these now. Okay, so now that you have your absolute no's chosen, these are the images you know you want to remove, my suggestion is just get rid of them. Get them off your computer. You don't need them taking up space. So what I usually do is just go through and delete them. So I'll show you how to do that. So to delete your rejected photos, simply go up here. We're in our library tab here. Now I'm going to click on attribute. Now we're going to be using this a lot in just a second, but your attribute allows you to filter your images by flags, by ratings, and by color. So here in our flag, we have a flag for a pick, 
This is an unpick and here's rejected. So if I click on this rejected flag, there we go, then all of my rejected photos show up for me. These are, these are my reject photos and <laughs> I feel kind of bad saying that, sorry guys. But these are the photos that I just don't need anymore. They don't serve my purpose for this photo shoot. So I'm gonna hit Controller Command A to select all of them and then hit the delete key on my keyboard. Now it's gonna ask me if I just wanna remove these from my Lightroom catalog or delete from disk. Now in this case, because these are my absolute no's, these are the, like misfires or where you like, you know, took a picture of like your fit, you had your camera turned back around, whatever it is. These are your absolute no's. So I'm gonna just hit delete from disk and we're gonna get rid of our absolute no's. They don't need to take up any space on our computer. Okay, there we go. We can just unclick this and we'll see all of our images back again. So that's step number one, get rid of your absolute no's. Now we're ready to move on to step number two, which is choosing your picks. These are the images that you actually want to work with. Now, we're, again, we're going from this many images. We're gonna refine it down just a little bit. Let's jump in and show you how to choose your picks. So my first suggestion in picking your photos is to view them a little bit larger so you can actually see what you're doing. So we have a few different views down here at the bottom. Now we're in grid view right here to start off with. That's G for grid view. Next we have loop view or E, and you can get to that just by double clicking on an image. So we're gonna double click on our first image, okay? And now I have it like basically full screen. I, I can see what's going on in this image very clearly. And because I've rendered everything out, if I just hold down the right arrow a bunch, you can see I can flip through my images very, very quickly. So when you're in this view, just hit the left and the right arrow to flip through your images, okay? Now, when you're flipping through your images, your goal is to choose a pick, right? I wanna, like, which are the images that I actually wanna choose uh, for my photo shoot? So, really easy keyboard shortcut. You can hit the letter P for a pick. So let's go through, and I'm just moving the, you know, hitting the right arrow on my keyboard. And you know what? The light on his face looks pretty cool there. So I'm gonna hit P. There we go. That's one of my picks. So I'm gonna keep going. That's not a pick. He's talking to the camera, you know, still getting ready, getting set up. That's pretty cool. He's got some nice light from the disco ball on him. All right, there we go. That'll be a pick. You know, obviously if he's looking at the camera, you know, in a way or just like, you know, not giving you the facial expression that you wanted for the picture, that's not gonna be a pick either. You know, that's not a pick because that's not what I want for the photo. So continuing to go through, just hitting the right arrow, you know, like that, that's pretty cool. Look at that little shine thing right there that just kind of like happened right near his eye. Like, okay, I like that a lot. So I'm gonna hit P on that photo. So we're gonna continue to move to the right, maybe a couple of those. There we go, little head to the ball. But you know what? Like this, his head, his head was, there we go, let's just find it. There we go, his head is on that ball, but I don't see any of the reflected uh, light on his face. And that was one of the big things about using this disco ball. I wanted there, I wanted to make sure that there was light on his face from the disco ball. Like, so that photo is not going to be a pick either. Okay. But maybe that's a pick because we get some of the reflected light on his face. Okay. So just continuing to scroll around, you can see in, in some of these, we have problems like in this one, some of the light is just shining right in his eye, which look, kind of looks cool, but kind of looks a little distracting. Uh, and we also have some of the light from behind our subject uh, shining through there. So in, in that case, that's not gonna work uh, for what we wanted. Some of those where he's holding the disco ball with two hands are kind of cool. There we go. I like the shine there. All right, that's pretty cool. He's pretty much touching the disco ball, but you can still see all of the, the light from it on his face. I'd like a little bit more light, but it's definitely pretty cool. Okay, yeah, that's nice as well. So just bring in going back and forth. Now here's where we made a big shift. So you can see from this image to this image, let's just go back to our grid view here. We decided to add a fog machine halfway through the photo shoot. So we actually have like some images with no fog and some images with fog. So now I'm gonna continue the same process. We're just gonna look through the fog images and I'm gonna hit P on the images that I like. And then after we're done choosing all of our picks, then we're gonna refine those and see what those look like as compared to one another. So jumping back into Lightroom, let's just double click here and we can start choosing our picks for the fog images. Yeah, and we have like all of a sudden I'm seeing, you know, this image where there's so much fog and a lot of fog on, you know, the front of it as well. 
And then we have this where I can see a little bit more of his shirt. You can see it's a little darker. And I kind of like that a little bit more. But his face is not, see, this looks like it's like blocking too much of his face. So I, I don't really like that just yet. I don't, I don't think it's there. That's cool, but it's cut off. So I'm going to hit pick anyway because his face is good. The disco ball is good at there. Everything is good. It's, it's a little cut off. But you can use a Photoshop. If you have another picture where it's not cut off, you can put that together anyway. So if you really like one certain part of an image, I, I recommend hitting pick on that anyway. Now, we have a lot of photos in here. So like that photo, that's really killer. I like that photo a lot. So we're going to hit pick on that one. And we're zoomed in. We can see we've got all the information we need. He's looking right at the camera. Really cool. He's got the lights on his face. And this photo, to me, looks great. So we went ahead and flagged this as a pick. So th this is a pick. Now, here's something that I recommend doing. Again, remember, this is going to be in processes. So we're going to be using picks. We're going to be using stars. And we're going to be using color ratings as well. Now, when I'm going through my pick phase, and this is what we're doing right now. We're going through the picks phase. Sometimes I'll like, <laughs> I'll do, sometimes I'll kind of like cheat. If I come to one where I'm like, that's a pick, and it's really, really good. I think this could be one of the finals. I'll go ahead and give it a five star rating. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do on my keyboard. I'm going to hit the number five on my keyboard, and it's going to give this image a five star rating. So now this is a pick along with all the other picks that I made, but this one's also going to stand out now because I've given it a five star rating. Okay, and that's something that I'm kind of doing like jumping ahead just so I know I can get back to this image really quickly. OK, let's go through and we'll get through all the picks and then we'll go through our next step. OK, so again, just hitting the right key. That's a pick too. Now, here's a great, uh, a great little quandary that happens, like this image versus this image. They're really similar, right? I like both of them. So I'm going to hit P on this one as well. And then later, we're going to show you a really nice way you can compare those images. So continuing to hit the right arrow. There we go. Here we did a few with his shirt off. It's too bright there. You can see it's like it's too much. I want less light on our subject. There we go. That's starting to be a little bit better. That works for me. Hit pick. That's nice. Now you can see his forehead is a little bit overexposed. The light on his forehead is a little bit too bright. Um, but I do like this facial expression. So if we needed to, maybe we could bring down the exposure there. We did somewhere the disco ball was kind of like hanging. There we go. And the idea with these ones was to uh, use Photoshop to remove this part of it, which is totally possible. All right. So let's hit pick on there, provided that we like the rest of the image. Here we go. The floating stuff. I kind of, after we shot floating disco balls for a minute, I was like, all right, let's get back to hand holding it because I thought it just looked a little more natural. Um, some of these where he's looking up, I thought were really cool. And the disco ball looking up. And there we go. Just going through these. The light on his face is nice, but it's, it's, not, it's not as cool as I'd like it to be. So there we go. Continuing to move. That's pretty cool with half the image in fog. Again, we were using a giant fog machine. You'll see that in the behind the scenes. Just wait till the end of this video to watch it. That's cool with some of the light here kind of shining through his shirt. OK, there we go. And we are actually at the end. So I've just hit the left and the right arrow through my entire set of images, and we've reached the very end. And that's about how long it should take. You know, you don't, don't agonize over this. Your first impressions are usually right. If you see an image and it goes, I like that image, hit it as a pick. If it doesn't do anything for you, don't worry about it, guys. Again, most of the time, what you're trying to do is get like, 200 pictures down to like one or two, right? So don't don't feel like you got to keep every single image in here. If the ones if they hit you right away, go ahead and keep them. Step three is applying our star ratings. So we're going to filter the images so we only see our picks. Then we're going to go through and give the ones that I like five stars, and then they're going to be moved on to the next round, which is giving color ratings. Now, in this section, I'm also going to introduce two new view modes. So we've looked at grid mode, which is where you see all the images. We've looked at loop mode, where you see one. 
Now I'm going to show you how to do survey mode where you can just view a couple selected images and also compare mode where you can view images side by side. Okay, let's go ahead and jump into step three. So here we are in step three. We're ready to take our picks and add some star ratings to those. So now what I'm going to do, again, make sure you've got your attribute tag opened here. We're in our library module. We want to go ahead and click on attribute. And earlier, remember where we used a flag earlier to show us just the rejects? Well, now we're going to use this flag to show us just the picks. Okay, so just click on this flag here. There we go. So now, from all of my images, from every single images that I took, I'm seeing just this many images, which is already, wow, okay, cool. This is a lot less hard of a job than I thought it was going to be. Okay, so now what I would recommend doing, we're going to take a look at our different modes, okay, because now we need to start comparing one photo to another. This isn't just like, oh, I like this photo. I need to see how it compares to these other ones. So we're going to start introducing you to these different modes as well. So again, our modes down here at the bottom, we have our grid view, okay, and click that. That's just going to show you all your images, okay. Loop view, that's going to show you one image, which is not helpful for comparing images side by side, okay. Our next view is compare mode. Now, this mode is actually great. Now, remember earlier, I went ahead, I skipped ahead a little bit. I gave this one five stars, but remember this image that's right next to it? They're, they're really, really similar. Well, if you hold control or command and click on both of these images, okay, then click on this icon here, which is compare mode. You can also hit C on your keyboard. There we go. Now I can see what both of those images look like side by side. So I can compare these images. Which one do I actually like better? And I'm going to look in certain key areas, like for instance, zooming in to his face, you know, which of these faces do I like better? They're really dang similar. Uh, you know, this one has a little bit more of a light like right on under his eye and this one, the light has moved over there. So just looking at these images, you know, I want to look at, okay, what's, what, what's the better image basically. And I'm going to go with this image here because we have a little bit more light here and right under the eye. So sometimes that's going to be your choice. It's going to be like, okay, this is the one I like more. So now that it, I know I like that one more, you know, in this case, this is where we would normally five star. It already is five stars. So I'm going to leave that five star on there. Okay, now I'm going to hit back to our grid view. So that's our first new mode that we're learning is compare. Now the next new mode is survey mode. Here you can choose a group of photos and see how they compare to one another. Let's jump in and show you how that works. So with survey mode, you want to select a few different photos. So in this case, I'm going to just click here on the very top. I'm going to hold the shift key down and click this entire top row. So I'm going to use this survey view to basically choose my favorite of this entire top row. So to go to your survey view, you can simply hit this survey icon right here, okay? Or you can hit N on your keyboard. So N on the keyboard, now we're just going to see these images. And for this demonstration, I'm going to go ahead and uh, remove my navigator tab. Let's just click here to remove the navigator tab so I can see all of the images full size. So here it's easy for me to see which images I want and don't want. Now, the cool part about this view is if you hold control or command and click on an image, it'll go away. So looking at these, I'm like, you know what? Yeah, I like the dark background. So this light background, it's, it's gonna go away. So I can hit this X button right there or hit control or command and click on it. And look at that, it goes away, gives us a nice animated, uh, you know, coming right back to you. Okay. This image where he's just looking directly sideways, that's a little bit less compelling when I can see, you know, this image, I can see both eyes, right? So I'm like, okay, that one can go. Controller command, there we go, that's gone. Now I can kind of look at these two images and say, you know what, this one's got some light on his lips, so controller command, that one's gone, because I like this one more of those two. And of these two, I like this one a little bit more too, because the light on his forehead's not so hot there. Okay. So looking at these two images, do I like the portrait mode or do I like the landscape one? You know what? I kind of like this one. So this one is going to get five stars. So we're here in step three where we're going from picks to stars. Okay. So now this image is going to get five stars. It's really easy. There are star ratings right here on the bottom. You can see you just click right there and give it five stars. Or you can simply click on this image and hit the number five on your keyboard, which sets that to five stars. Okay. Well, that's really great. So let's hit G for grid mute grid mode again. Okay. Let's bring back our, there we go. Let's make it how it was earlier. Now, remember we just loaded this entire top line of images 
into our survey mode. And then I chose this image as the one that wins from this entire top line. Okay, pretty cool. So now we're gonna do the same thing for our next line here. So I'm gonna hit shift. We're gonna click on all those images there. Okay, I'm gonna hit N. That's gonna bring up our survey mode. Okay, and then I'm gonna decide which of these are just, hey, I don't want that in there. This one, you know what, doesn't fit. I like the other ones a little bit better. This one looks a little too cuddly for me, so I don't want that one in there. This one, I don't like the light as much. Comparing these two, I think this one's a lot more like moody and emotional, so that's gonna be my winner there, okay? And I'm gonna give that five stars. Now this one, I don't wanna compare these just yet because uh, this one has no fog and this one has fog. So let's go back to our grid view and I'm gonna start comparing just the ones with the fog. So I'm gonna click on this one and hit shift and then click on the first set. And I recommend when you're in survey view, like you can see, I've got seven images selected here. Let's do six. I recommend not doing more, not selecting more than like six or seven images. Because if I selected all of these and hit survey view, they'd all be this small, right? So let's go through like an entire, you know, row or like five or six images. I'm going to hit N for survey view there. Okay. This is like that light on his forehead. That's a no. So control or command, click there. Or again, remember you can hit the X. Okay. See how easy this is. And you know what? I, I don't like the no shirt in this case. It, I, I think the shirt on actually works a little bit better and gives us a little bit more flexibility. So that one's going away too, okay? And then the difference between these and then the ball floating. I like the idea of the ball floating, but it, it doesn't really even look like it's floating so much. It, I, I think this is still the winner. And this one, you can see right here, I've already made a five stars. So I know out of all these images, see I can just click those, I'm still thinking this is the five star. We've gone all the way down to this one. Now we're gonna go all the way to the end. I'm gonna hit N for survey view. Okay, and I can see which of these images I like. Not so hot on that one. Not so much on that one. That one's the one I like from this one. Okay, we're ready to get back to our grid view. So I'm gonna hit G to go back to the grid view and we've got all of our images here. Okay, so I know that was a lot because we went through step three, but we also showed you guys survey view and compare view. And those are really important when we wanna compare our images side by side. So that pretty much wraps up step three. So again, step one, we got rid of all of our absolute no. Step two, we went through our picks. Now here in step three, we chose our five star ratings and we used the survey mode as well as compare view to help us do that. Okay, so now we're almost done guys. Our next step is we're going to choose our colors and then we're gonna be done. So now we're ready to assign our color ratings. Now remember, we've done picks already and we've done stars and now we can do colors. So you have multiple different phases of tools you can use to filter down your images. And that's why I say when you're calling your images, always think about it as phases. Like I'm gonna do my first phase, second phase and third phase. Okay, so now jumping back into our images, we've, we have this many images now, but we know, okay, the ones we actually wanna look at, those are the five star ratings. So up here where we see our attribute, okay? We have our flag and that's selected. Remember that's gonna show us all the flagged images. Now over here, I'm gonna click on our five star. Okay, and now we've got four images. Well, that's not too hard, right? We went from like 217 down to four. That really didn't take too long. So let's hit command or control A on all those images, okay? And then I'm gonna use survey view for these. So I'm gonna hit N for survey view, and then I'm gonna see all four of my images right here. And I'm, again, I'm just gonna collapse this little sidebar so we see everything just a little bit larger. Okay, well, now this is actually pretty easy. I'm like, okay, well, this is, it's too foggy. This one's too foggy. So I'm gonna hold control or command, click on that one. This is the horizontal, but you know what? I do think the fog adds a bit of this image. So that one's going out from this to that. We basically have a little bit there's more fog in this one, but I think this is the clear winner. So control or command, we're gonna click on this one. And here we go, this is our image. This is, the, this is the image that I'm choosing out of that 217 images. This is the one that I'm saying, you know what? This is the image. So let's go ahead and give it a color rating. So on here in the bottom, you're gonna see your flags here. So you can see it's a pick. You can see it's got five stars, okay? And then here on the right, bottom right, there's a little triangle or a little rectangle there and you can click on red, okay? You can also hit the number six on your keyboard, okay? So red is number six, 
and then like seven is going to start as yellow, eight will start as green, nine will be blue, and zero will give it a, a zero star rating. So we don't want to do that because I hit zero and now look, I can't see it anymore, right? So I want to make sure I can include that one. So let's go back to where we found it earlier. It's this one, let's, I made blue. So let's hit, make sure to hit five on there, okay? And then I'm going to hit, there we go. We're going to hit five and then I'm going to make that red as well. So now this image, there we go. If I go back to our grid view, we can see this image is a five star image. So let's go ahead and we've got all of our images, then just our picks, then our five stars. Okay, and out of this, then we click on red and there we have it guys. That's basically the image that I've chosen out of these 217, I've chosen this image. And you can see how easy it was when we divide based on step by step by step. So just double click on this and then from here, you're ready to start editing. You can edit this in Lightroom, you can export it out and edit it in Photoshop or you can just send it exactly like this. But we've taken the process of going through 217 photos down to one and really simplified it. So that's how I call my images in Lightroom and hopefully this helps you guys out. So let me know if you have an idea on how you're coloring your images in Lightroom or things that you think may help people out, leave it in a comment right down below. We'd love to hear from you guys. All right, well, now we're jumping into a quick behind the scenes video where you can see everything that went into this photo shoot. All right guys, enjoy the behind the scenes video. For the next shoot with Ian, I really wanted to play with light and the idea of working with a disco ball sounded like a lot of fun. Now, my idea was like have Ian actually like hold a disco ball in front of his face and have light from the disco ball shining back at his face. And that was like, okay, cool. I sketched it out and in my head, that looks really cool. Come the day of the photo shoot, how do you actually do that? How do you shine light from the disco ball and actually have it work and shine back on the subject's face? So. My original idea was actually to put two lights behind our subject, have him like shine over his shoulder, like over the ear into the disco ball and have the light bounce back on his face. Now we did some tests and it just, it really didn't work. It didn't look exactly how I wanted it to and light was spilling all over his face and it was just, it was not so great. So what we wound up doing is placing a light bare bulb. This means without a reflector, no modifiers at all. We wound up placing this directly behind Ian. So we've got my camera, we've got Ian, and then our bare bulb light that's behind his head. Now what's cool there is because the light is directly behind Ian's head, it creates a little bit of like a glow or a rim light around Ian. But that light also hits the disco ball and sends light back to Ian's face, which is real cool. Now, if he's holding it like directly straight on, we really didn't see that light. He needed to like hold the ball outwards a little bit so the light would have a chance to come in and then bounce off and hit his face. So this was with a 70 to 200 millimeter lens. I was way backed up. It was totally okay. The compression made it so you really didn't see the difference between him holding the ball here or here. But in the actual photo, his hands are like way out here. You, it, you can't really tell, which is pretty nice. So we had one more light and we brought that in as a hair light right above Ian. And uh, that's in just like a standard reflector. And we use a 10 or a 20% grid on that light. So it would just hit the hair of our subject. So you can see the lighting set up on your screen right now. Now, because we were doing this photo shoot live and people were watching this as it was unfolding and seeing the pictures, they were like, man, you should totally throw some fog in there and that's gonna help pick up some of the light from the disco ball. So real great benefit of shooting live. We had a lot of great ideas and this was one of them. So we decided right there on the spot, let's do it. So we pulled the fog machine out and blasted the room full of fog and it made a huge difference in the photo because it just added like a, a like mystery and, and drama and, I, I liked the photos before, but afterwards, I think the photos were more dynamic and you can see the light actually shining through the disco ball. So again, we were able to pull the shot off relatively quickly from you know start to finish, maybe uh, 45 minutes or so, but it wouldn't have happened if we hadn't come up with the concept and sketched everything out ahead of time.